All right, good morning, everybody. Um, God bless you all. Um, came to mind, because uh, I went through it the other day, came to mind to talk, um, talk a little bit about hard days, high bluebird skies. Um, a lot of people, a lot of us, we, if, if we go fishing a lot, bluebird days uh, aren't exactly my favorite. A lot of people would say, wait a minute, you mean you, won't, you don't like a day to where the wind's not blowing a lot, it's nice and sunny outside, it's so pretty, it's so, it's, I'm not saying it's not a beautiful day. All I'm saying is it's a harder day if it's in the middle of the summer, um, sometimes in the fall, it's harder to catch fish on those days. Unless you adapt. So fishing, be honest with you, is, is honestly, it's, it's a lot like life. Any day is a good day to go fishing. But there's a difference in going fishing and catching fish. If you want to go and you want to catch fish, then you have to adapt to whatever the day is. That's that's probably one of the hardest things for us to do. You have to adapt. Okay, um, you got to think a lot of times and try to. I'm not going to sound silly and say you have to become like a fish, but you have to think about what would you do. What would you do in the middle of a sunny day? You know, where would you be found at? You'd say, well, the number one place is I'd probably be somewhere with air conditioning. <laughs> That's right. So in other words, you would want to be somewhere like in the house where there's shade. There is a way for you to catch fish on bluebird days. And the trick that I've found, and I've sat out there in the sun many a days, and uh, there's some days you just get one or two bites, some days you get more. But one of the ways that I've done it is to simply slow down. To start looking, and you don't have to have all the fancy gadgets, don't get me wrong, it makes it easier if you have all the depth finders and all the different things. Uh, here in the last few years, I'm fishing out of a kayak, I fished out of a canoe, and I don't have all those fancy gadgets. So how do, how do I find fish? The way I find fish, believe it or not, one of the easiest ways is I throw a heavier jig. This is, this is that 3H jig that I've been throwing all the time, okay? This is how I find the cover. This is how I find the logs, find the cover that's under there. Why? Because I'm throwing it out there on 15 pound line cigar. We got a pretty sensitive rod. I'm throwing out there, I'm taking my time. Yes, early in the morning, I like fishing the banks because any fish just about that's on the bank is usually active, wanting to catch fish, wanting to bite, is wanting to eat. But when that sun starts to come up, you got to think they're wanting to get underneath. They, they don't really want to be out in the sun. Okay, They want to be in wood cover. They want to be underneath docks. They want to be somewhere where there's shade. Okay, And they're looking all, not just for ambush points, but they're getting out of that sunlight. Okay, uh, When I was a kid, I remember watching a couple of fishing shows. They would say to fish your spinnerbait to where you could just barely be out of the sight and water, and you would probably get more bites where you're throwing your spinnerbait. Well, a jig is a good tool to drag around on the bottom, and you never know, you may get bit while you're doing it. You drag it around the bottom, you're finding that brush pile. You start coming through that brush pile, you get, you may get popped, you may get a little bite, you may get a little tap tap, you may get something that triggers you to let you know that, hey, there's fish down there. Maybe a bluegill, maybe a crappie, I don't know what it is. And you say, well, but but that five, that set, that three eighths is, is moving and I'm not getting any bites or smacking at it, not getting bites. Well, here's what you do. Look right here. This is the exact same jig. It's still that MJ jig I've been throwing, a little finesse jig. This is a three eighths. It's right here. You see how much smaller it is? This is a five sixteenths. This right here, they both have, both have the exact same trailers. You can mix it, match it. I do that sometimes. Sometimes if I know there's one trailer, they're hitting better than the other. Sometimes if I'm going to those stumps and throwing, I'll throw this one around to try to find the fish. And after I feel like I found that log, I found that thing, then I turn around and I pick up this smaller one and I take my time. Now, what does this one do? 
it goes back to that this forces me to slow down this forces me to throw it out 10 12 15 walk 15 foot water i throw it up into 20 foot of water I start dragging my rod instead of holding my rod way up high because i already know that log i got a pretty good idea where it's at instead of rod holding it high i may lay it sideways and i may start dragging through there just little by little when i feel that little bit of log on that tip of that rod that I can tell it's holding something, I'll sit there and just barely shake it like you would a shaky head. Just shake your line. Don't shake the bait. Just sit there and bounce that bow in your lines, all you gotta do. And what it'll do is it'll, it'll cause this thing to sit down there and quiver. You'd be surprised how many times. And when you start doing that, you don't feel a bite gently pull it towards you and kind of hop, hop over that little tree, make it just kind of come over it. You'd be surprised how many times this little jig right here will catch on that log. And when you go to pull it across, it'll jump. And when it jumps forward, it's amazing how many times them large mouth, small mouth spots, whatever, they've come out and nailed it. Because all of a sudden, this bait, the reason I believe they do it, all of a sudden this bait has no control of its actions. Well, as long as it's on the bottom, it can kind of control, it can dart, it can do things. Here's my theory on this. When this bounces over top of something, it's suspended in midair, it can't do a whole lot. They grab it right when it's midair because that's just how they're designed to do. God designed these bass to be able to do this and it's amazing how they'll just come out and grab it. Next thing you know, your line's swimming off you set the hook and you've got another blessing for the day. So, which jig is better? 3 eighths, 5 sixteenths. Got news for you guys. You need them both. You need them both because there's gonna be times in the winter time that I may throw this and then I'll turn around and I may find the fish with this. I may catch one or two. I may slow down and fish this one right behind it and catch three or four more. There's times in the summer but this jig right here, the 3 8 awesome because it's got that fast fall. I'm going to put a little couple little video clips in for you here in just a minute just to show you how different these two are with the exact same trailers, how they fall through the water. Okay, first I'll show you the, the, the 5 16 Five sixteenths. Oh, this is the three eighths. It falls a little bit faster. And then I'll show you the three eighths, and you'll see the difference. It's the same bait, same color, that watermelon red. That's what I've been throwing this whole time. All these are is just little zoom speed crawls and green pumpkin. Okay, these are just some of the trailers that I use, and it's just to give an example. You'd be surprised how many times you go out in a bluebird day, and yes, you can throw little finesse worms. Yes, you can throw all these little things, but guys, look, the concept is the same. You're slowing down, you're throwing something smaller profile. That little finesse jig is it, slower profile. You still have the ability to where you're using one bait, you throw it out there and you work it down there deep, it makes you slow down and that's what you need to try to do. It makes you slow down because a lot of times those bass that are out there, like I said, summertime, they don't want to move very far. You'd be surprised how many times that little double, that double having two different jigs tied on, throw them on the same size line, 15 pound seager, throw them on the same rod, seven foot, medium heavy action, that little extra fast tip on there to be able to work these jigs. These have light wire hooks. It's the same size four aught. Must add hook, nothing's different. The way uh, the way M and, M and J jigs is made, they're made with the exact same things. The only difference in these two is this, this weight on this head. That's the only difference in these two jigs. And what that does is that changes the fall completely of that bait. This one here, you'll have to pop it a little more when it goes it goes straight to the bottom just about this one here when it goes it kind of slowly glides slides down 
anyway hope these little tips helped you um hope it'll help you catch more fish hope it'll have you get you to where you can enjoy the day that's what it's all about enjoy god's creation go out and enjoy enjoy the day if you need any of these jigs let us know we'll be happy to get you some just message me and uh i'll make sure that uh we make you some we get them to you anyway that's that's just what came to mind i hope that blesses somebody and hope hope it helps you enjoy god's creation a little better you all have a blessed day god bless